All right, welcome back. Uh, so last time we got a little bit of the way into data frames. I showed you some of the ways that data frames uh, worked and how you could access uh, particular variables in the data frame using the dollar sign operator. Okay, so what we're going to be doing in this video is going a little bit further into data frames and seeing how we can manipulate some of the data in the data frame. Okay, and we're going to be doing that a lot using the dollar sign operator. So if we're going to start by bringing in uh, the data that we had before. So we're going to use the exact same command that we did last time. We're going to bring, we're going to use read.csv to read in some CSV data, store it as a data frame. We're going to store it as act data. Now, of course, act data and all these other variable names are just ones that I'm coming up with. You can call them whatever you want. You can call it accounting data. You could call it a data. You could call it just a. Uh, a lot of the time you might notice if you're looking for help with R online that a standard thing to do with data frames in R is just to call them DF. Uh, because a lot of the time you have to refer to the variable, the data set name a lot in R. So having a short one means you have to do a little bit less typing. But here we're going to call it act data. So let's read it in. So we have, of course, again, 460 observations with six variables. Uh, now, uh, one thing that we can do, of course, is we can refer to the variables of this data frame with the dollar sign operator. Well, let's, let's look at our data set real quick first. So if we look at our data set, we can see we have six variables. We have year, firm, market value, book value, dividends per share, earnings per share. Great, good to go, right? Uh, so uh, let's manipulate this. So first of all, let's, let's just refer to one of those variables here. Let's create a new variable, actually. Create a new variable. And let's, for some reason, imagine that we wanted to create a variable that's equal to the next year, right? So we have this year, this is 2008, 2009, 2010. Let's say we wanted to have, store in the data set what the next year looked like. So I can create a new variable just with the dollar sign. I can say act data dollar sign new year, right? It doesn't exist yet, but it's going to in a second, right? I'm going to use this arrow sign to point to push something into that, right? I'm going to create this new variable, this this new variable called new year. I'm going to shove some data into it. And not only can I use the the dollar sign to refer to that new variable, I can use it to refer to the old variable. So I can create new variables as functions of the old ones. Great, right? So I'm going to create a new year, which is going to be equal to act data just regular year plus one, right? I can refer to other variables as, to, as well. I could just say act data dollar sign BV. If for, if for some reason I wanted to add the year and the book value together, I could. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to add one. So now I'm going to do that. If I look back at the data, I've got this new year, which is, of course, one higher than the year that we started out with. So, so far, so good. We can refer to old variables using the dollar sign. We can create new variables using the dollar sign. You can already see the benefits of working with a data frame. We can, we can manipulate variables in other ways. So for example, we see this firm variable. What kind of variable is that? Well, let's check. Let's use, of course, our as dot uh, character. We might expect it to be a character variable because you can see it's made up of letters there. And I'm going to refer to act data dollar sign firm. Oops. I would add it as character. Uh-oh. So I made a mistake. So let's go ahead and start again from the beginning. It's always good to start from a clean thing if you made a mistake because it makes sure that you get back to where you want to be. Okay, so I didn't want to do as uh, character. I wanted to do is character. Check if this is a character variable. False. It's not. Okay, so uh, it's probably going to be a factor. Often if, if a string, if a variable with a bunch of letters and words and stuff is not a string, it's going to be, it's not a character, it's a factor. So let me check. Is it a factor? Yes. True, it is. Great. So now we know what kind of variable it is, but maybe we don't want it to be that way. Maybe we want that to be a character vector. We want it to be character variable. And so we can manipulate this in the exact same way that we did before. So we're going to turn firm into a character variable. Now we know that we can use as character, as I just did by accident, with as x data firm to turn it into a character vector. But of course, right? Here I'm just saying, hey, what does firm look like as a character vector? I'm not actually saving it anywhere. I need to save it as the new variable to make it actually work. So I'm going to say act data dollar sign firm. Turn that into the character version of itself, right? So not only can I create new variables using the dollar sign, I can uh, I can replace the old variables with a new version of something, right? Uh, so I can I can both manipulate old variables and new variables using the dollar sign. All right, so. We know how to manipulate variables now. What if we now want to select just parts of this data set? Okay, so we've done some of this before uh, with 
uh, with indexing. So for example, let's say that I want to select just the firm ATB. I've got all these other firms in here, but I don't want to look at those. I just want to look at ATB. So I can do this with indexing just as I did before. So we get just ATB, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is, of course, we would, select, we would create a vector to tell it which, ops, which rows we want. So we'd say, hey, tell me where uh, the firm variable is equal to ATB. Great, and that's going to give me a vector. I'm going to stick this inside the row part of our index. And then I want all of the columns of those rows. If I do that, it'll give me back, of course, just those columns. And it's, of course, reading it out to the screen and not storing it anywhere because I just told it, show me this. I didn't say to store it anywhere, right? Now, now with the indexing, this can get a little bit tricky, right? Because there's a lot to keep track of, but we, there's going to be an easier way to actually work with all this, and it's called the subset command. Now, what the subset command is going to do is it's going to do just what the indexing uh, can do, uh, except it's going to be a little bit easier to work with. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing we just did here with ATB, but instead we're going to do it with the subset command. So we're going to get just ATB again, but with subset. Okay, so subset's going to take three arguments. So we're going to say subset. The first thing it's going to ask is what data set are you working with? We are first working with the ACT data data set. So what I'm going to get back is some chunk of the ACT data data set that's not the whole thing, just part of it. The next thing we're going to tell it is what rows we want. And of course, we want the rows where the firm is equal to ATB. So we want firm equals ATB. Now you'll notice I didn't say act data dollar sign firm. I just said firm because it already knows we're working with the act data data set. So it knows what we're talking about when we say firm. So if I do this, boom, it'll give me back the exact same thing that I got before. But it's a little bit easier to work with. As a bonus, it's a little bit easy. Now, this doesn't seem actually that much easier, right? It's, not, it's, it's slightly shorter than the first command, but not much. But it does get a lot easier when we start adding on other stuff. So, for example, maybe I don't just want uh, the ATB firm. Maybe I want the ATB firm in a particular set of years. Maybe I only want the recent years, okay? So let's say uh, just ATB and recent years, uh, particular after mm, 2011. So I'm going to say subset. Again, I'm going to say act data. That's the data set I'm working with. I want firm equals the ATB. And I want year is greater than 2011. Now I'm just down to that, right? So I can combine a little bit easier uh, if I use the subset command. And of course, you can see that I'm, I'm already saving a lot of space because I would need to do act data dollar sign for both firm and year if I wanted to do this with the indexing. Even better, subset will also help you choose just the variables that you want. So maybe I don't want... Uh, all these variables. Like, for example, this MV variable here, look at that, NA, NA, NA. It's missing. NA is the missing indicator in R, and we'll talk a little more about that later. So I don't want that variable. I want to get rid of that variable. I want all the variables but that one. So uh, maybe I want just ATB. I can take all the years again now. Um, but only the columns that aren't MV. So I'm going to do subset. I'm going to tell it I want to start with act data. I want firm equal to ATB. And then I'm going to say select. Now select is the part that's going to help us figure out just the variables that we want, right? So this first part was telling us which rows we're going to get. The second part's going to tell us, the select part's going to tell us what columns we're going to get. So I'm going to say select. And as this has helpfully reminded me, I want select equal. Select is equals to. And I'm going to need to tell it the vector of variables that I want. So let's see, I want year, I want firm, I want BV, I want DIV, I want EPS, and I want new year. So I do this, it will give me the exact same thing as before, but without that pesky MV messing things up. Now you might think that seems like a lot of typing to do. What if I had a big data set, but I still only want to drop that one variable? Do I need to type out everything? No. The nice thing about R is it tends to know what you're talking about if you sort of tell it uh, in a way that makes sense. So I don't want it to tell it these are the variables that I want. I, want, I just want to tell it I don't want this one variable. Well, I don't want a variable. How about subtract? that variable. Let's subtract the variable. So I'm going to use subset again. Oops. Subset, act data, uh, firm equals ATB, right? Because I still only want that one firm. And I want to select, see, I want MV, but I don't want MV, right? So I'm just going to put a negative sign right in front of it. I'm going to subtract that column right out of there. So I do that it will again give me the exact same thing. Now, of course, each of these times I'm just running the code and outputting it to the screen. Uh, I'm not actually saving it anywhere. So let's, let's say that, uh, I want to take ACT data. Uh, and first of all, let's, let's take this ATB data and, and store it all on its own, right? 
I'm, I want to look at ATB data all by itself. I don't want to keep doing this subset thing. So let's store it somewhere. So let's store the ATB data by itself. So I've got this uh, right here that's going to give me that subset. But of course, I want to store it somewhere. So I'm just going to say, uh, this is my ATB data. I'm going to start right there. And if I do that, you can see now it's got six variables, all the, with the seven that we started with minus MV, but it's only got 10 observations from ATB. Maybe I want to get rid of MV in the main data and make it stick. So I'm going to do subset, act data. And I'm not just selecting fern now, so I'm just going to, I'm going to get rid of MV. So I'm going to do select equals negative CMV. And I want it to stick. If I just did this, it would just print out that data set, that subset of data set for me. So I want to make it stick. So I want to say, hey, act data, now you're the subset of act data. If I do that, boom. Now I've still got 460 observations, but I've only got the six variables. That is, I got rid of MV. So to sum up, what we've been doing, we, we're working with data frames. We're talking about how you can use the dollar sign to access the variables of the data frame. Uh, you can, of course, access old variables and do something with them. Uh, you can create new variables with it. Uh, you know, and so I, I can do some sort of transformation of the old variables, turn it into something new. Uh, heck, maybe I want to create a new variable that's just equal to one, because why not? New variable equal to one. I like the number one. So act data one is equal to one. So now I got this new variable in here. Look at all those ones. I like ones. Uh, okay, uh, so I can use the dollar sign to do that. Also, if I want to select particular parts of the data set, I can use the I can use indexing as I was doing before, or I can use the subset command, which is a nice convenient way of working with data sets. All I got to do with the subset command is tell it the data set that I want, tell it the rows that I want to select, uh, and tell it the columns that I want to select using the select option of subset. All right. Uh, that's the basics of data frames. I uh, hope that you are going to find this useful. And of course, we're going to be using data frames a whole lot as we go through uh, with R, because that's what we're going to be working with most of the time in econometrics is data frames. There's, of course, also a more advanced version of data frames called a tibble, which has some nice features to it. Uh, but that's going to be sticking. We're going to stick that in the advanced version of these videos. Most of the time, we're just going to be working with regular old data frames. All right. Uh, so. That's uh, some of the basics. Next time we're going to be talking about how to get a little bit fancier. We're going to talk about installing new packages to add on to R. Uh, so I hope that you will be here for that. Thank you.